This is Red Hall, which is one of the oldest rooms in the school. It is called Red Hall. Any guesses why it's called Red Hall? It's red, obviously. Um, all the furniture in this room was bought by Miss Hillard when she first started the school in 1909. And the furniture actually, actually was probably picked up in 1907 when they were building the school. And it has been here ever since. This is all the original furniture and it, the school has just taken very good care of it and refurnished it and kept everything exactly the way that it was um, almost 100 years ago. Why don't you go up and away from the balcony, it doesn't. This is the staircase, which my mother is for some odd reason fascinated with it. I don't generally see its beauty because I go up and down it about 50 times a day, sprinting up between class to get books that I've forgotten. However, it is very beautiful. And tell us now. about the logo. The logo, Mom? The? The quotation? The quotation. This is our senior class quotation. We knew who we were when we woke up this morning, but we must have changed several times since then. Each class since, I think probably since the school started, has had a quotation. And to tell the truth, this very much describes my class. We're very eclectic, and we're always changing, and there's some very fickle people in our group, so it's a very good quotation. Mm -hmm. This is the old mower. It used to be just for now. It's the most useful spot, and there's just a small area where we have our mailboxes. But if you look in the old picture of the boxes, the mailboxes would be the same again since the school started. So some things will make them back and look exactly the same. And other things, for instance, the fact that we built a whole new gym on what used to be an apple orchard have changed very much. A five-star restaurant in the south of France. No, it's the Westover Dining Hall. Yes, this is actually a high school cafeteria in disguise. While often the food is exactly the same, the fact that we have to dress nicely and use our proper manners and set up pretty tables sometimes makes the food mentally taste better, even though in actuality it's the same as cafeteria food. Actually, the food's here very, it's very good, but it's especially nice to eat it in this beautiful, beautiful dining room. And if you look over here, there's all sorts of photography exhibits and art exhibits. We usually put some artwork up here. We have a very strong photo program with Mr. Gallagher. It was amazing. And those two, which you probably can't see because the reflection are mine. Taking the shelves are books written by Westover alumni, and this isn't even probably half of what it is. These aren't alumni books, but these ones, these two in the middle here. I'm sure that there's twice as many that we just don't know about. Um, Westover Arc, graduates tend to go on and do some amazing things. And these are portraits of some of the past headmistresses and the headmaster. Um, and the that who's the current head of school is not currently painted, but I'm sure she will be within a few years. This is my favorite room in the school because it's 
as you step inside of it and you feel like you're transported back to 1909. Nothing has changed in this room except maybe the piano has been tuned or some things have been polished and repaired. This is the old headmistress sitting room, and this is where special seniors would be entertained for tea with Miss Hillard, or where guests outside the school would come, or when very, very rarely girls could entertain male visitors. They would come here and usually serve tea from one of these old tea services that are now no longer being supposed to break them, but on the wall. And my favorite part of this room is that there are all sorts of old books that probably should come in this room, but I, I borrow them and usually return them. I love reading these old books. Again, I have no musical talent, but if I sit here next to the beautiful piano and hold this metronome, sometimes people can be deceived and actually think I might have some musical talent. This is um, one of our baby grand pianos. We have not one. Not two, but three of these on campus, which is just extraordinary because our musicians have amazing pianos to play on and there's other instruments all over the school. We're making Ainsley sneak up the staircase and she's probably going to wake Mrs. Polina or someone who's sleeping up the stairs. Mrs. Polina doesn't live upstairs, Mom. I know that. I'm just joking. Westover is also full of intrigue. Here I can feel like I'm Nancy Drew of the Westover world with the Dana girls. Inside here, underneath that little sign that says warning asbestos, is a trap door that leads down underneath the school. And once in that door, we decided to ignore the asbestos sign because Alice assured us that asbestos down there was not of a quantity to hurt us. And we actually crawled through all the passages under the school and we came to a brick wall. And Alice said that that tunnel beyond the brick wall probably went all the way out to this distant field that there used to be tunnels going all over the school. So, if you ever need a place to hide out, west over. Yep. This is Stalinport. Now, there's an interesting story behind the spikes that I'm going to invent, but we'll explain something else. F. Scott Fitzgerald, his golden girl, was actually a student at Westover. And back in the early part of the century, he used to actually come here, and Miss Heller, the headmistress, would throw books at him and rocks at him when he was in senior garden, trying to talk to his golden girl. And so, my personal theory is that the spikes were added only after Fitzgerald started coming here. Later on, Miss Hillard um, who realized that Fitzgerald was not just a Princeton dropout, but actually a famous novelist later on in his life, um, regretted her throwing books at Fitzgerald. Hello, closer. Okay, I can, I can. And if you come through this gate, you can see our pretty gate. And over to one side, are the math and science buildings and the old gym that they built in the 1960s. And over to the other side of them, the athletic center, which is opening in less than a month, and we're very, very excited. There are squash courts, two basketball courts, two volleyball courts, a rock climbing wall. I don't know why they didn't just build as a giant building with full of one giant rock climbing wall, but anyway, and locker rooms and a workout room that's to die for, and all sorts of beautiful things. So that's all new. Okay, and then get this side. At this point, this house is straight ahead. And in the distance, there's different fields. And Westover owns quite a bit of property. They used to own more, but owns about 60 acres or something. And it's just beautiful. Mm -hmm. Okay. Never eat an apple from the over tree. Only eat apples from the west. At Westover, there's a, a tradition that started when the school started. When girls back in 1909 were not very athletic, but girls at Westover were supposed to be athletic. So they divided the school into two different teams because there were no other girls' schools that played sports. So the West and the Overs, you choose when you came here. And the West would play the Overs and then the rest of the seniors. And whoever won from the West and Over game would play the seniors. And they just do this over and over again so they could have some sports. But this is the West Tree. That's the Over Tree. And that is the of the West Tree, the Senior Tree, the Over Tree, forgive me. And you'll notice that the Over Tree is very, very puny, and its apples are poisonous, so you never eat from the Over Tree. <laughs> the West Apples are very good, though. I've already seen that. Okay. Only 